What a view. This is incredible. An Ontario County nonprofit. Hey guys, Tori here from Overlook Horizon, coming to you live, nice early balloon launch. We've been here for, uh, I don't know, a couple hours at this point. It is way too early in the morning, but live in Farmington, New York, getting ready for Overlook Horizon 19. Uh, this is going to go up today, and this will be the second attempt for our live in-flight video. So we made a couple of tweaks uh, to the live in-flight video. Hopefully should give us a little bit better performance. I do still expect that we'll have a little bit of cutting in and out during flights, but this should at least be a little bit better than we had last time. Maybe slightly watchable? Hopefully. That's what, I, that's what I'm hoping for. Um, so uh, good morning, everybody. It's good to see you. Uh, well, Columbia's here. It's up, up, and away time. Good morning, Tori, says Columbia on Periscope. Hey to uh, Braga, Bragawal, Bragawal, Brad, Brad Druggle. Yep. Hello. <laughs> um, and uh, a bunch of people joining us on the YouTube channel as well. Hi from Vietnam. Wow. Hello from Vietnam. Um, hello, hey, uh, morning ballooners, uh, morning admin, yo to Gary, so, uh, oh, and Michael says it's 6.30 in the morning in Iowa, but he wouldn't miss this for the world. I like your spirit there, Michael. We were here at, uh, or I was here at 4.30 this morning. Uh, this is Eastern time, because it's now almost 7.30 Eastern time here now, so, so let me give you an update here on, uh, on where we are, so at least you know, uh, know what we're looking at here we'll throw the uh, we'll get the countdown clock up so you can see where we are in the count uh, we're, we're T minus one hour and uh, just under three minutes um, so we got some time here uh, I feel like we have a little bit more time than we had last time to kind of take a breath breathe a little bit get ready to go um, and maybe chat a little bit more hopefully I can get to some of your comments a little easier here today uh, last last time uh, which was just a week ago, a week and a day ago, we had uh, a little bit of an issue with the live broadcast system, uh, like right before uh, we went live. It was like an hour before we went live, so I was furiously scrambling trying to fix that issue uh, as we got ready to go live last week. But uh, this week, we're good. So Alex Ziggyful says, it's 4.30 a.m. here in California. Need coffee. Yikes, yeah. That's uh, pretty much what time I got here, 4.30 in the morning. Um, but yeah, I've had... Uh, I'm, I'm all caffeinated and ready to go. Uh, Mike's here with me. He's off somewhere. He was flying his uh, uh, FPV, his first person view, uh, little flyer wing airplane thing, a little RC airplane around here. We had a little bit of extra time once we got set up, so I did take some cool pictures of it. That thing's pretty cool. Um, but he had that up and flying around, so he's messing with it off to the side here now. So, um, But uh, yeah, we are uh, Getting ready to go. So to give you an idea, this is pretty much a repeat of the last flight in the sense that we're, we're doing all the same things and, uh, you know, hoping for, um, I mean, we couldn't get too much better than last time around, but hoping for a few improvements, hoping to improve the live video performance, uh, hoping to um, hoping to repeat the recovery like that was phenomenal, landing right by the side of the road. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to do that again. Um, and uh, hoping to do a, little bit, a couple improvements on the the landing prediction software. Something went haywire on the landing prediction software last time. Um, we still got our landing predictions, so we were at the location, but uh, there were some things that went kind of crazy. Uh, if you follow us on Twitter, you might have seen that uh, our landing prediction software, which is supposed to auto-tweet, it's supposed to send out like, it's only supposed to send like four or five Twitter messages just to give like an update at like launch, 50,000 feet, 100,000 feet, balloon burst, and then landing. This is like five five tweets as well it tweeted out like 175 tweets in the course of two hours um so sorry twitter friends uh, we're gonna try not to do that again this time um but yeah that w that was an issue this very important issue the the tweeting portion of the flight we had to get that fixed but hopefully that is that is fixed but very calm day this morning uh see the windsock in the background i was just looking at it it's barely moving here we got almost no winds which would be great for for preparation um, but yeah, so we fixed the Twitter issue. Hopefully the landing predictor is, is A-OK -okay and good to go for the entire flight. Um, and then, um, and then we're also flying again, um, we're flying some book plates. This will be the second flight of book plates for Phil Samper's, uh, new book called The Gravity of Us. So we got some book plates here. Um, 
This is he's got a new book out called The Gravity of Us. A uh, cool book about space and um, that is it's coming out. I believe it's February 2020. But his book plates are flying on board. They flew on board Overlook Horizon 18. There was half of them flew there, and the other half are flying today on Overlook Horizon 19. Um, and if you pre-order his book uh, between now and February, pre-order the book, you'd be eligible to get one of these special book plates that have flown to hopefully over 100,000 feet. The ones on Overlook Horizon 18 flew to 103,300 feet. We're hoping for a for a similar altitude today. Should be right around probably 100. Hopefully we break 100,000. It should be just barely over 100,000 um, because the payload is, for us, a little bit on the heavier side um, with all the live broadcast stuff and the extra batteries for that inside. So, so yeah, check it out. Uh, check out Phil Stamper's new book. It's called The Gravity of Us. Um, and so thanks to Phil for uh, supporting our flights and flying on board, flying with uh, Overlook Horizon Airways or something like that, right? <laughs> so, yeah, we'll have a couple of these in there. And you can see, I don't know if you can see these on the camera there. That's what they say, uh, send into space. I think he's going to sign them all um, when he gets them back. So this is the second flight for him, and he'll, he'll uh, second and final. That's the second half. that We split them in half to, to distribute the weight a little bit better. Um, they ask what our flight plan is for today. So, yeah, so um, in addition to that, I guess I want to tell you about the live video stuff. Um, I don't know if I can show this to you here. Um, but a couple of things. We've switched to, uh, I've got it over here behind the camera. We'll see it during launch time. But on the ground side, we have a parabolic grid antenna. So we still have the Yagi antenna, and we still have the big patch panel antenna uh, that we had last time. Uh, we'll, those will kind of be our backups. But we also have the, uh, the, the big parabolic grid antenna, and that is fantastic. That gave us like a, a 10 dB uh, improvement uh, in our tests just by using that parabolic grid antenna. So we've got one of those here um, for that as well. And then on board, we have a patch antenna. So the, the issues that we had last time, and, and actually, fortunately, uh, fortunately we got Mike here, who's a uh, radio expert, which I'm, I'm not. I'm a, I, I, just, I just dabble. Um, and then a whole bunch of you guys in the comments, you guys sent me, I got a whole bunch of nice emails from people and comments, everybody trying to give us tips and stuff to improve, which we actually took a lot of, I didn't respond to all of them, but I did read them all. And uh, I took a lot of them to heart because um, I'm not a radio, uh, radio expert. I'm, I'm getting better, but I'm not good with antenna theory. So, but anyway, so our problem that we had last time, uh, or one of the problems, we had many problems, but one of the problems that we had last time is that we used a dipole, uh, you know, vertical antenna on the payload, and it was pointed straight down at the ground. Now, for for any of you uh, uh, radio experts that are out there, you, everybody's going to know this. But for people that don't know anything about antenna theory, your your vertical dipoles they have a uh, basically a horizontal radiation pattern. It kind of looks like a, a a donut or a squish donut, where uh, where the vertical antenna goes right through the middle, and so. At the bottom and the top of the antenna are what are called nulls, and there's essentially no signal there. Um, and really all the signal transmission and receiving for a dipole antenna are going out the sides, which if you have it pointed directly out the bottom of the payload, you're kind of going out the sides. Um, and I mean, it does spread a little bit, um, so it's not you know just perfectly horizontal, but it mostly goes out the side. And if you're standing directly under an antenna that's pointed straight down to the ground, you're not going to get a ton of signal from a dipole antenna. So uh, what we've done to improve that or to change that, if we switch to a patch, uh, a, basically the patch panel antenna, we've, we've got a small patch antenna that's on the bottom of the payload here. And that'll give us a, a better radiation pattern. Um, that, sorry, I'm just laughing because I'm watch, watching Mike set up a, a chair right behind the monitor here. I feel like a, I feel like a fish in a fishbowl. He's just sitting right behind the monitor staring at me. Sorry, it made me laugh. <laughs> um, but anyway, so the patch panel antenna has a, a much broader radiation pattern. That This is a directional antenna that is directed towards the ground. Um, less horizontal signal, more directed towards the ground, but it does spread out, so it kind of, it's, you know, it, it's a much more complicated shape than this, but you can kind of think of it like a conical shape from the payload kind of broadcast out towards the ground. And hopefully if we're inside of that that shadow of the broadcast, uh, the signal there, then we should be able to pick it up. So that's the idea here today. Oh, better antenna. That antenna in our tests 
our ground tests, long distance ground tests performed much better uh, than the dipole did anyway. So even, even just having the directional antenna was much better. And with the grid, the parabolic grid, much better. The problem we're gonna have, and I gotta start filling the balloon here, we're, we're starting to get behind schedule already. But the problem we're gonna have is this is still, I don't know if it's vertically polarized or horizontally polarized, um, but it, it, it's not circular por circularly polarized. Um, so it's either vert vertically or horizontally polarized. And so the issue we're gonna have is that to get the best signal, that patch panel has to be pointed, basically logo up straight at the antenna, or it can be 180 degrees pointed at the our ground antenna and you get good signal. If it's pointed, if it's rotated 90 degrees and pointed at the antenna, then we, we start to get signal loss. So where we're gonna run into issues today is while the payload's spinning, when you get to a, an orientation that's perpendicular to the ground antenna, then we're gonna have a little bit of signal loss. So hopefully it's not so bad that it cuts in and out all the time, but we should have, um, we should be able to at least receive it a little bit, so. All right, so we gotta start filling here and uh, we're gonna get, we're gonna get going. Let me see uh, what people here said. You need a heat shield. We're not quite at that point yet where we need a heat shield. <laughs> Fingers crossed for a smoother video today. I hope so. I hope it'll be a little bit smoother. Can you speak in meters? Uh, I wish I could, but I don't know it well enough. Um, but we should hit about 31, 31,000 meters or 32,000 meters, somewhere in there. That I do know. Um, and then uh, when we come back from filling, I'll show you the flight prediction path, but uh, but we're gonna start uh, start filling here now and see if we can get underway. All right, and we'll be back after filling. We'll chat some more, and uh, we got 53 minutes to go. So we have guests, so I'm gonna unplug for a minute just to say hello. You we'll probably see some people walking around here today, uh, but I'm gonna unplug for a minute to say hello, and then I'll plug right back in, and so you can at least hear the audio while we're while we're getting up and running. Okay, here we go. We're gonna start start filling this up. We're using a 1500 gram balloon again. Uh, again, this is the largest size balloon that we have in our arsenal. Uh, we, we can go larger, but we just don't. We don't, but this is the largest that we do. Um, all stuck together. It's been very, the downside of it being early in the morning like this is that everything is wet. Hopefully it should dry out as the sun comes up a little better, but everything, Everything is wet this morning. It's not too bad. Including our feet, or at least my feet. Yeah. Luckily, I learned uh, that uh, I wear my waterproof boots even during the setup here. I used to only wear them during recovery, but now I wear them during setup just so I don't have wet feet while I'm while we're trying to get all set up here. All right, let's see. All right, so we put two safety strings on. We put our payload strings on. One, two, I probably should turn this this way so you guys can see what's going on. Or actually, I'll go this way. I'll turn this way so people can see what's happening. Put your cameras at two ends. Yep, okay. So, then we're ready to throw this on and we're gonna need some duct tape, the gorilla tape there. It's a t tight squeeze today. It's like folded under there. That's actually, it's kind of got like an imperfection here in the neck. Yeah. I've got two of them actually. There's one here, one there, one on the other side. It looks like it was clamped or something. Maybe where they, they do test inflate them all. So maybe that's like where they clamped it. I don't know. All right, let's throw, some, throw a strip sure. around. Yep, perfect. Go ahead and rip that there. Then we'll get a zip tie. We'll catch the 
safety line. Or no, not the safety line. That, let's see. I don't want to do this. I'm going to put all those up here. And I just really need just want one safety line here. Maybe I'll do two just to be safe. Extra safe. Let's see if our zip ties hold up today. Zip tie. <laughs> Same batch of zip ties. They've been not performing well lately. Okay. Get this out of here. Seems like we're ready. Okay, here we go. open now. Are we going to have enough or do we got to switch? We'll let that fill for a minute. Hopefully, uh, I don't know if we're going to have, I mean, we have enough, but I don't know if we'll have enough in the single tank there. We want to switch to uh, switch to this view over here. <laughs> well, I think we might have enough. Just barely. Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> well, we'll have to feel guilty about throwing that tank away. Yeah, look at that. I would say that's... That's holding it. Let's try to Let's try the fish scale. Okay. Let's see what we got. So I rarely ever do this, but we have it. So we have a fish scale here that'll give us a digital readout of what we're pulling. I'll hook it on there. Let it go. Yep. Pull that. So we're pulling uh, 2.8 kilograms on the dot uh, and that's yeah pretty much right right where we want to be I mean it's not perfect down to the gram but that's close enough for my purposes all right so let's um, let's seal it so we're gonna use this safety line that slipped all the way down here Slip this in here and then see if we can get it started. And then uh, you want to grab there and I'll twist the bottom. Actually, and then can you hold this? Uh, 
Is that going to hold? That's the question. Okay, there's one. We're attached to a safety line here. Detach that. Actually, before I even do, take that off. Yeah, that just has bad news written all over it, right there. Slide any more lines up? Oh yeah, they all fall down. Now we're gonna try to get them all. Get those two, and we'll get that one also. We're gonna get all of them. What am I caught on? There we go. I thought I was caught on something. I'll try to go above this one here. Oh, actually, now we'll go below it. That seemed to hold. That seemed right, too. And this is why we do multiple zip ties instead of one. Because <laughs> we had. So many failed zip ties last time. All right, there's that. I'll just kind of U shape this. And we'll throw. Definitely not holding. <laughs> so there's a failed zip tie. We'll do we'll do another one. <laughs> Don't quite understand that. Oh, what was that sound? Uh, it was popping off the top of this other zip tie, but I think that's oh. good. tape going here. Electrical tape that'll just kind of go over the, the sharp ends of the zip ties so we don't accidentally pop the balloon before we're ready to do so. Have you ever weighed all the tapes and the nub at the bottom? I have not. It's always been a. It's one of those things that we're talking about, like the inflator, where if, at least think about it at this time. But <laughs> Never before. Yeah. No. So yeah, it probably adds a little extra weight. All right, let's see. I'll let her, let her go. I think we're attached to something. We'll probably have to pull these. Uh, we'll pull these safety lines yeah, back so it's a little lower. Tangled up here. Yes. What happened to the bottom here? Looks kind of funny, but that's all right. All right, see if we can pull some of these back. Make it sit a little bit lower to the ground. One. There's two. You want to get that third one there? Go talk to the people.
Ah, uh, can you go a little bit tighter? Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay, we're filled. We're filled, we're sealed. We're good to go on that front. Um, let's see, let me give you the count. I don't know what happened to our countdown here. Uh, we'll put the countdown back up. So there we are, 39 minutes to go. Um, we're doing okay. We're nine minutes ahead of schedule, which is good. Make sure we did everything here. All right, now at T minus 30 minutes is when our electronics will come on. I don't know if that camera was recording or not, but hopefully it was. <laughs> A little GoPro camera that's recording the balloon filling, so. All right, let's see what everybody had to say. Uh, let's see. I think the real question is, where do I get that jacket, and is there overnight shipping? You want you want one of these flight suits here, huh? You like these, huh? This is our uh, flame-resistant flight suit for when we switch to hydrogen. We're still using helium right now, but at some point here soon, we're going to switch to hydrogen uh, just because helium is super expensive. So we'll have uh, flame-resistant flight suits for, for safety in case something goes kaboom. Um, but uh, we're, let's see, so not gonna, not going to skip the atmosphere by 40,000 meters. No, the, the highest we'll get today is about 31,000, maybe 32,000 meters, which is about a, just over 100,000 feet. Um, shout out to Mike helping out the team, man. Yeah, Mike is a huge help. Um, if anyone wants to start a GoFundMe for better zip ties, let Tori know. Yeah, right? Those, <laughs> those zip ties are terrible. I don't know. They, I never had a problem until this year. It must be they're getting old. Um, or maybe maybe I got a bad batch. Um, but uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, somebody asked about following the flight here. So, uh, so, yeah, you will be able to follow the flight live. Some of the trackers are not online yet. Um, but uh, if you do want to follow it live... Um, here's a link to the live tracking map, so it's overlookhorizon.com slash map, and you'll be able to follow the, uh, follow the flight live while it's in the air, be able to see where it is, and then hopefully today, right here on this stream, you'll be able to see some of the video. Um, question is going to be, you know, how reliable is the video, and how, how soon do we have to shut it down, because uh, it is going to land a little bit further away than last time, so last time we could stay pretty close. Um, or we could stay on, we could stay here and live longer, but we had to shut it down and, and leave um, to go to the recovery. Today we'll have to do that a little bit earlier because the recovery is a little bit further away. Um, so, so yeah, that's, there's the, um, um, there's the link to the tracking map there. So, um, so we're at 36 minutes here. Let's see, that thing is, uh, Gordon says, I have zip ties that sat in the garage for years that failed. Yeah, I don't know. These zip ties aren't crazy old, but they're probably about a year old. Um, I think we got that big pack last year. But, yeah, some of them, I don't know, probably 20% of them are failing. Like, one out or yeah, maybe 25%. One out of every four, basically, is, is failing. We got four zip ties on there. One of them is no good. So, uh, so yeah, it's uh, I don't know what's up with the zip ties. I guess we got to get new ones. Um, Kevin says, good luck with the launch and recovery. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate that. Can you go into detail into why helium is more expensive? Um, yeah, I will do that while we're taking a look here at the tracking map or the flight prediction map. So to give you an idea on, um, on what the flight path is going to look like here today. So this is the flight path prediction for today. So we are up in the top left-hand corner of this map up in Farmington, New York, Farmington Town Park, same place we lost for, launched from last week. Um, this will head out, it's going to go southeast, it's going to head towards uh, Geneva, New York, which is right at the north end of Seneca Lake there. Going to head to Geneva, New York, that'll be about 60,000 feet, and it'll make a kind of a U-turn, head back to the west, uh, almost to Canadagua, a little bit south of Canadagua, 
Uh, it'll burst, hopefully just over 100,000 feet, and then it should loop back around and have a landing somewhere in the Gorham Stanley area. Um, we have been watching some of the flight predictions last night. We're pushing it closer to Seneca Lake. I really don't want to have a water landing. Hopefully we stay out of the water today and stay dry. Um, we do have our cut down system. So if we land in a tree, hopefully we can cut it down and we can, we can recover it. Uh, I mean, obviously we just hope to land in a field. That's the best case scenario. But uh, if we don't land in a field, if we land in a tree, we got a cut down system that should cut itself free hopefully we haven't had to use it yet but it's there um, and we just really hope we don't land in the water um, okay let's see uh, Alex shout out to our admins thanks for being awesome yeah thanks to Alex Ziggy full for adminning here today and shout out to Gregorius uh, Gregorius had a, a, um, a death in the family so he's uh, he's gonna be tied up for a little bit while so we're all thinking of you Gregorius uh, so if he's watching uh, the replay afterwards we appreciate all the work he does here as an admin and a moderator on the channel. Um, so, uh, yeah, he's going to take some time with his family, as he should. Um, so, uh, let's see. Live from the balloon says, Arup Paul, uh, yes, we should have live video from the balloon today. Um, we had it last time. It was a little bit choppy. It was in and out. Hopefully, we should have live video from the balloon today. We'll still have a little bit of choppiness. Hopefully, that's better today. Um, but we, I do still expect choppiness from the, uh, um, well, I guess that's, hmm, that's been on the whole time. So, um, yeah, so we do have, uh, we should expect some choppiness still, but hopefully it's better. Um, let's see, what kind of requirements do the FAA have for these kind of flights? So if you're, if you're a small flight, which we are, which is basically under six pounds. Um, we are under four pounds. We're in the three point something pounds range. Um, but if you're a small flight, there's there's not a ton of restrictions on what you can do. So um, you got to make sure that um, you're, you know you're not launching at the end of a runway. You got to stay. Generally, you have to stay at least five miles away from an airport. You can launch closer, but you got to coordinate uh, closely with the FAA, which we do anyways. Even though um, we're more than five miles from an airport today. Um, you got to make sure the string that you use is no more than 50 pound test. So we just use this pretty lightweight kite string. Um, there's a, a weight and density requirement so that you don't have a big, you know, solid bowling ball up there. It's a pretty um, uh, low density payload. The weight is kind of spread out over a large area. Um, what else do we have? Obviously, you got to have a parachute on board. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. But if you go to overlookhorizon.com slash safety, gives you all the FAA regulations about, um, about what it takes to fly high altitude weather balloon, at least in the United States. Uh, but we work closely with the FAA. You'll actually see me later in the broadcast, right about 20 minutes. I actually make a call to the Rochester Airport Tower. I'll call them directly. I have the direct phone number to there. Let them know that we're launching and that we're on time. I also call Cleveland Center, which is the uh, even though we're in Rochester, New York, Cleveland Center covers the upper air um, in this area. So basically, once you get out, so Rochester Tower covers kind of the approach and departures for Rochester, and then the actual transiting traffic that's in higher altitudes, that is uh, handled by Cleveland Center. So like your big planes that are going from like, you know, Boston to Chicago or something like that, they would be communicating with Cleveland Center as they go over Rochester. Uh, but your flights into and out of Rochester airports, they would communicate with the Rochester Tower. Even flights that are out of like Canadegua, um, when they um, when they depart, they will communicate with Rochester Tower, even though they're not departing from Rochester. Um, let's see. Um, 5 a.m. for Alex. Yeah, we're it's an early one today. Um, Let's see. K quick photo. I met you at NASA Social Man. This is my first live stream. It's pretty freaking cool. I'm pumped. Oh, that's awesome. I don't know. I don't. I can't see your picture here on my live stream at the moment, but I'll have to look you up afterwards because uh, all I see is the username, and I don't recognize the username. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's awesome. I love going to the NASA Social. Um, so uh, glad you're joining us here for today. Um, so somebody asked uh, about the helium. Um, we're going to turn on some electronics here. Um, starting up our micro tracker is already on so actually did that already that's good 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 
and we'll have to verify that. So actually, we're, we're, we're way ahead of schedule today. I do have to take some pictures here shortly. Um, but uh, so helium is really expensive. We're actually, helium is a non-renewable uh, resource here. So we, we mine it out of the ground. Uh, basically, it's kind of a, a byproduct of the mining process of natural gas. Um, but we don't have a ton of helium available and uh, it's used for a lot of applications. So it's used because it's an inert gas and because it's, uh, um, because of its lifting properties. So it's used in the scientific community for obviously launching balloons and things like that. Um, it's used in rocket launches. They backfill all your propellant tanks, your fuel and your liquid oxygen tanks. They backfill helium into those tanks to keep the pressure the same level. So as fuel flows out, they pump helium in to keep the, the tank pressurization up. Um, they also they use helium in like MRIs. Um, so, so there's a lot of medical uses and scientific and rocket launch uses for, uh, for helium. But anyways, it's not a renewable resource. And so, and we don't have a ton of reserves for it. Um, so we, uh, we're basically just low, this low supply of helium. That's why the prices keep going up. Um, it costs us for one of these big tanks here, uh, which we get about two launches out of, um, it costs us about $400, so it's like $200 a launch. Whereas a sa the same tank of hydrogen, same size, is like $30. Huge difference. But then you got the problem of the, you know, kaboomy boomy part of, of hydrogen. So, uh, yeah, hopefully yeah, hopefully we'll switch to hydrogen here soon. We've still got a lot of helium. Uh, you know, fortunately for, for us, we still have a lot of helium um, kind of in our um, in our reserves here. So we gotta, we're going to use that up first before we try to switch to, uh, to hydrogen. But we're getting prepared for it, trying to figure out how to transport it, how to safely work with it, how to ground ourselves so we don't have any static electricity, sparks, or anything like that. Um, let's see. Uh, Rooftop just discovered our channel. I want to ask you, do you get a license of some kind or a permit for the nearest airport? So you don't need a license or a permit for small flights. So it really depends on your payload weight, which this is our, this is our payload here. It's hooked up to the ground here, but this is, this is it right there. But for small flights, you don't need a license or a permit or anything like that. And actually, you don't even have to, you don't really have to tell anybody. As long as you follow all the regulations, you can just launch. Uh, we don't do that. We actually work closely with the FAA so that we can, uh, so they know what we're doing. They can let air traffic control know and let the pilots know that there's a balloon in the area. They can follow it and track it. Uh, and they appreciate that. It's not required, but they really like it. They like to know that, that we're out there. Um, and then it just develops a good rapport so that if we have something come up, um, you know, we've encountered close flybys of aircraft and things like that. Nothing dangerous. It's all safe. They know that it's there. Air traffic control knows that it's there. Um, but they know a safe distance. And they know the nice thing about balloons is they're relatively easy to predict um, where they're going. They don't make erratic uh, changes in direction. They have a constant ascent rate. So air traffic control can look at where our balloon is and see the direction it's going and the speed that it's rising at. And they, they're easily able to predict where it's going to be five minutes from now, usually if they're going to have a plane transiting that area. Um, so, so anyways, we've had some, some closer flybys of aircraft and things like that. And, uh, you know, if somebody, if somebody ever brings it up to the FAA and says, oh, hey, what are these guys at Overlook Horizon doing? Why they got this balloon out there? The FAA, because we coordinate with them ahead of time, they already know they have our flight plan. They know exactly what's in our payload. They know the weight of our payload. They know the size of our balloon, our parachute, the color of our parachute. They know everything. They know where our flight was going, what time we're going to launch. They know all that ahead of time. And it just makes it a lot easier um, if, if, any, if there's any questions that come up um, after the fact. So it's easier to coordinate with them ahead of time. Um, so let's see. Uh, what else? Great education lessons on helium. Oh, thank you, Weather World. Um, it has action adventure plus amazing acting. <laughs> Act oh, I, would, I wish I was a better actor. Uh, I don't know if you're talking about me. Um, let's see. Balloons have the right of way per the FAA. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, you can't steer a balloon. So there's nothing I can do. Once we let it go, there's nothing that I can do to change the trajectory of that balloon, which is kind of the exciting and the terrifying part at the same time. Because um, all your electronics that you build, your flight computer and your tracking system and your cameras and everything, once you let it go, you're just like, you're going, all right, 
I hope it works. And it, it's, this is why we do a lot of like rocket launch coverage on our channel as well, um, because it's very similar to the way rocket launches work. I mean, they have a little bit more control, but for the most part, once you commit to launch, uh, you're, you're really counting on everything working. Uh, Cause if you have a major disaster, when you launch a rocket at T zero, there's a problem. So you're really, the engineering that goes behind here, much, much smaller scale, but still it's kind of the same concepts that you're relying on your electronics to actually work and you're relying on your checks and your checklists and your, you know, all your pre-flight stuff to make sure that things are progressing as planned so that when you do launch, you feel confident that your systems are gonna work, your cameras are gonna work and things like that. So um, why do you launch these balloons? I don't know, it's fun, right? <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're a nonprofit education group. So we're trying to get students and adults too interested in science and technology. This is a project you can do at home. If you want to get an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, you can build this at home. You can build tracking systems, or maybe you don't want to fly balloons, but maybe you're interested in Raspberry Pis or tracking systems, or you want to do maybe like first-person view um, for uh, like an RC airplane or something like that, because this Wi-Fi um, live video system we're using today can be used. Uh, it doesn't have to be on balloons. You could use this on um, like an RC airplane or something like that. So, so it's just to, to get you inspired to try to do a science project at home and, and do something like this. Cause it's, it's easy to do. This is not a big operation. We're not a, you know, there's not millions of people here. Most of the stuff, I mean, we got a pretty small team. There's only like three or four of us that, that work on this kind of stuff. I do a lot of the programming and stuff with the electronics and the launching. Uh, lately it's been just me, me launching, but fortunately Mike has been helping lately. So this is a project you could, you can do. Um, are you at Genesee Valley Park? I'll come by and shake your hand. Um, no, we are at um, we're at Farmington Town Park in Farmington, New York. Um, that's where the launch site is here today. Um, let's see. Uh, what else did I say? And it's like, oh, it's my friend. Where's my mouse? I'm trying to go back to some of the Periscope comments here because I missed a bunch of those. Um, Let's see, yeah, it should be a nice morning here um, for flight. Somebody said nice morning for flight. Uh, should be a nice morning. Um, we've got uh, just barely any cloud cover here this morning, which is great. It's kind of one of the reasons why we picked this time to launch because um, the clouds are supposed to increase a little bit later in the day. Um, so we wanted to launch at this time of day to hopefully reduce the cloud coverage because the pictures and the video look so much better when you don't have a bajillion clouds. Um, so hopefully we should get some today and I still have to put together a lot of the videos and stuff, um, from our last flight, but we finished that and we went on to this one. So, um, and anyways, before we get to the last thing here, or, or we're going to start getting busy once we get to 20 minutes. Um, but one other thing I wanted to say about the live video is we do have one more iteration of tests that we're going to do after this, um, that should actually even provide more improvement to the video system. So. Um, we talked about earlier in the broadcast, the polarization of the antenna. So this is a patch antenna, but it's, I don't know if it's vertically or horizontally polarized. I think it's horizontally polarized, but I'm not sure. Um, but whatever it is, it's a non-circular, circularly polarized antenna. What that means is that as the payload spins today, that's where we're gonna get signal loss and signal degradation um, is when the, if the payload is spinning underneath the balloon, uh, that antenna is gonna, it's gonna, come perfectly aligned and then it's going to come perpendicular and when it's perpendicular we get almost no signal but when it's in between even if it's just slightly there we should get some signal and when it's right on we should get full signal strength which we can full signal strength we were picking up really good um, the antenna that we actually have coming next week and the ground antenna we have are circular polar circularly polarized antennas and that should solve that problem so as the payload spins the signal is actually circular, circularly polarized, and so it shouldn't matter that the payload's spinning. We should be able to pick that up. So that's going to be the next iteration on Overlook Horizon 20. Can't believe we're getting to 20 flights already, but that will be uh, that will be next, and hopefully, it'll be another improvement to the live video system. So, all right. So we're going to switch to battery power here now. We're pretty much ready to go here. So we're going to switch that off, switch that on. You'll hear some tones. This is the flight computer starting up. Now it's gonna search for GPS signal. This could take a couple minutes. It could get done, could happen right away. You never, you never know. Some days are better than others. Just have to see uh, 
see how it wants to perform today from a GPS standpoint. Um, wind speed. The wind speed is almost zero. Um, oh, you can't see the windsock anymore, can you? <laughs> there is a windsock. It's behind the balloon. So you'll see, uh, you'll see the windsock once we take the balloon out of the way. Um, but, uh, yeah, the wind is almost zero right now. You can see the balloon is barely moving, um, which is great for, for inflating the balloon because you can set it up and you can kind of just let it sit there. And it just looks nice and majestic there. I do have to take a, my my pre-launch selfie. Always forget. I don't, don't want to make sure to take my pre-launch selfie here, so I can share it out on social media afterwards. You guys can watch the watch the magic happen here. Their selfie. I ought to take my take my hat off. Here we go. I think we got we got enough enough selfies in something something I'll be able to share. I do want to try to take a couple of more a couple more pictures here. All right. I got to make sure I remember to switch to my other lens when we launch. So I'm gonna to try to take some nice pictures when we launch. All right, so let's see. We gotta verify that we got signal. Check and make sure that's working. So I'm basically I'm using the same map that you can use here. T minus 18 minutes. We're gonna be uh, overlook overlookhorizon.com/map. Just making sure that uh, that we're transmitting here. Need a line. Yep. So we're good to go. And we are, we are transmitting. Okay, so now I'm going to, now we're going to call the FAA. Let them know that we're ready to launch. Uh, and I'm going to mute the audio um, while I talk to the FAA. Um, but we're going to give them a call here. So we have to call Ro Rochester Tower and Cleveland Center and let them know, let them know that we're launching. Then I'll come back and we're going to chat live. We'll get to your comments afterwards too. All right, so that was the first one. Uh, the guy roughly roughly knew about our flight. He remembers seeing the notice, but he didn't have a link to the map. So he wanted to pull up the map while I was talking to him. So that's why that one took a little bit longer. Sometimes they only take two seconds. Now calling Cleveland. All right, so that one was easier. Um, he knew exactly about our flights, and so he just said, thanks very much, we'll keep an eye out for it, so. Um, all right, so we're at 15 minutes here, so now we're gonna start turning the cameras on. I'm probably gonna, Mike, can I get your assistance here? Can I get your uh, help here? All right, so we gotta get 
I'm gonna get you to hold this payload. So now we're gonna get an antenna that sticks through the middle. And I hope that cable there doesn't cause interference on my antenna or vice versa. <laughs> So that's in, and I need to get a better grip on this box. I need to get a grip. <laughs> get a grip, Mike. All right. So, oh, we got to turn, gotta yeah, turn cameras on. Let's turn them on. We'll listen. There's one. one. Waiting for it to blink. It's blinking. So we got we got video. That should be this one. You should see a blue light. Let me know once it starts blinking. Blinking? Blinking, so we're recording. And then the live video, we should get a blue light there. I'll let you hold that for a second. I'm gonna switch this here, so our... Blue light flash, blue light solid. Perfect, all right, let's see if we got video here. We should see, hopefully. Oh, belly cam. No, that, that doesn't look so good. <laughs> huh. Okay. Pie's got lights, Alpha's got lights. The question is, so we have live video. The question is, am I going to be able to share it with you? I saw an HDMI cable not connected under the table. There. Is everything connected? Yeah, everything looks like it's connected here. Huh. Okay. See, I don't like when stuff like this goes goes on. All right, let me see. See if we can do some quick troubleshooting. Real. Uh, video capture. You want this video capture device? Oh, we're getting. Why is it? Why is it giving me this awful? This is this is what it's giving me here. Let's try a different HDMI cable maybe. And we can try to reboot the receiver just in case. Um, where's the other end of that HDMI cable? We want somewhere there's another end here. It's this oh, it's plugged into the monitor. I believe it's this one. Yep, that's it. I'll plug this into here. All right, I'll try. The other option is plugging into the monitor to see if you're getting video that way. All right, let's see if this comes up. So here's there's the software we're using. So you see it coming up, loading. Are we get? There we go. Okay, so that's better. Okay, good, quick troubleshoot. All right, now we gotta, all right, so all the cameras are on. We're still doing good. We gotta, let's secure it all. Button down the hatches, literally and figuratively. So this is gonna go out this direction. That go here in that little groove. Tuck that in. All right. Can you see if we can try to set that on the table just so I can push against it? All right. Get this down here. Yeah, if you want, yeah, if you want to collect all those strings, we're going to need those in a second. Still getting video? Still getting video. All right, watch your hand here. Let me get it. Uh, let's see, we'll go right there. There. Get one in over here. And we'll get one more 
there next to the Space Lobster sticker. Did you do want to secure this antenna? Oh, yep. Thank you. Secure that and get it kind of straight down if we can. That should be straightish. Um, and then, all right, let's put all the harness pieces on here. So, this is this is the part that gets nerve wracking here. here. Hold on to that for a second. You're gonna lose that sometime. Get that out of the way. This is a, that's just a safety line so that we don't lose our our tracker that's on the outside of the payload. Oh, I think we need that. <laughs> need slip, slip that back in there. Yeah, slip it on that side there. We can secure that. And then you hold that and we're gonna attach it to the balloon. Okay. Oh, and we gotta secure, yeah, hold that upright and I'll secure the extra slack in this, in the cut down wire. Just kind of go like that. Which of course we won't need because it's gonna land in the Right, so we definitely will not need this today. But just tape it down so it can go along for the ride. Okay, looks good. See anything odd? I think we're okay. What are we at? Eight minutes here. We attach that. Uh, we're not launching at night, so we don't need any strobes. We gotta start our landing prediction software. Get that running prepare the ground camera for for launch I got to disconnect and run this out there one minute release the safety lines gotta take my microphone out of my shirt here okay we're gonna switch to switch to the launch cameras oh shucks
Yes. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Uh, craft, uh, unmanned balloon launch the of Kennedy Airport Airport's uh, department. Here we go. OTC. Make a booster for go. TPC. TPC is open launcher. Stop the F. Stop the F. Think I'm good. Houston flight. Houston flight is go. Pilot. Island PDL is open launcher. STF. STF go. Safety console. Safety go. STE. STE go. LRD. LRD is go. SRO. SRO is go. You have a range clear to launch.
to take a car. Well, good luck, folks. Well, thank you. Yeah, glad to meet you. Nice to meet you. We're in the air. How's our video doing? It's not too bad. It's looking like we're it's cutting in and out a little bit, but this is to be expected here. Let's move uh, move this out of the, the logo out of the way so you guys can see. So this is kind of what we expect here. Um, I will. I'm going to get to your comments in a section. In a second, I want to take some photos. We're going to hang out for a minute. There's no pivot on this tripod, sir. Uh, to the back? Yeah. Um, you just have to loosen, you gotta loosen those, uh, wing nuts a little bit. And then you go over. It's, it's a still, straight overhead right oh, up here. Straight up. Wow, that's gonna be hard to see. Alright, let's look at the look at the tracking map a little bit. Make sure we're working here. You guys are still kind of getting some video. Giving the parabolic as best I can here. Yeah, it looks like it's yeah, it's worth six thousand feet. So we are getting some. We're getting something.
down and it's over that way. Contrail. There's another sort of where the contrail is dispersing. It's about uh, two thirds or three quarters of the way over to the left of it. Yeah, I see it there. Got it. How it be? Or are you looking at it through your phone there? Yeah. Talking about a minute or two behind. Or, or All right. I'll be with back with you guys in just a second. Let me get my lens caps on, and then I'll come I'll come say hello. Let's see where we are. Alright, I'm wrapping things up here in just a second, but I'll be I'll be back with you on the stream here. Just a minute. Still taking some pictures and such.
morning. This is Tori. Hi, John. So that was Cleveland Center calling. Uh, they were watching the map. They said they were they were a bit confused uh, because they they didn't know. Uh, they saw two balloons on the map. They wanted to know if we had two balloons in the air or just one balloon in the air. So, um, all right. So, oh, I should probably put the microphone. Actually, put it on. There you go. So anyway, so in case you didn't hear that, Cleveland Center call called. Wanted to know if we had two balloons or one balloon because they saw two on the map. So. Um, all right, so it looks like we're doing well here. Um, I gotta still pull up. I gotta pull up some of our uh, um, some of our software to see uh, to see how we're doing. But uh, if you want to track this live here, OverlookHorizon.com/map, and you can follow along with it live here. Um, Thirty-two hundred meters. Forty-two hundred meters is what we're at now. Um, let's see. Oh, I got a whole bunch of notifications here so let's see hopefully our automated tweeting machine doesn't go haywire today it appears it is not so far but we did get the one automatic tweet that says lift off so that's a good sign um, and all right let's see where's my I tried to get you a copy of it Android app, yeah, I never, but never got the notification. it still hasn't been approved by by Google yet. Um, so yeah, 14,000 feet is the last position that we got. Um, it's 2.3 miles away from us. The target is at a 90 degree azimuth and a 50 degree elevation. Do you want the my big fancy compass here? Brought a better compass today so that we can actually point the antenna in the right direction. Uh, let's see. Here, we'll get this, this guy going. So we should be, we want to be, let's see, 90 degrees is, 90 degrees about that direction here. And I guess I could put it down to where, two more. Right into the tree. That How way. Much cable do we have? And then uh, here, I'll try to I'll try to tilt it back. See if we can go any more. Oh, here's here's the problem. Here, you hold that for a second. We gotta go. This has gotta be down here. Come on. usually just finger tight but apparently my my early morning finger tightening is much stronger than I expected all right there we go okay this direction sorry we're messing with the antenna here so that should get us much better tilting capabilities so where is, yeah, where is that? So we wanted to, be, of course I don't have my phone now, but we wanted to be, that's too far. So there's 90, and we want to be 50 degrees, so we want to be up a little, even a little higher than that. Oh, that, that might be as high as we can tilt. What's that, 40 degrees. So we can only go back 40 degrees, so I guess, actually, I'm gonna untangle this cord here. Sorry, picture's gonna cut in and out. Bear with us for a second. Make sure we're pointed in the right direction here now. <laughs> the end. Shim the front leg if we have to. Antenna's messing with my compass. This looks like a 
about 10 degrees right here. Of course, now that I did all that, it's probably outdated. All right, so we're kind of behind the camera here. We're trying to set up, we're trying to get the antenna a little bit better, better pointed. We're working on that. Oh, look at that, actually. That, still cutting in and out. <laughs> it's a bummer, but uh, let's see. So now we're, oh, wow, we changed quite a bit. <laughs> Might be why we're cutting in and out. Let me bring the phone with me this time. So now we should actually be, well, it still says 90, de 90 degrees to us and 42 degrees to the target. So yeah, now we're probably too hot. Oh, actually, that's pretty good. Here, let me do it with the phone. Can't get it out of my pocket. There we go. All right, so phone says we're at uh, 44 degrees. So actually, we got to hold that, tilt down a touch. There's 41 degrees. Uh, should be about 90 so right about there that's kind of what we want I think for the ideal signal I've got 90 being more eh, not too bad but yeah well you can feel free to mess with it however you want I'm gonna talk to the people <laughs> I'm gonna talk to my people all right sorry a lot a lot of stuff happens as we're getting ready for launch. Oh, we got no signal whatsoever. <laughs> uh, it was there, but I think we're, uh, we might have, it's cutting in and out quite a bit. Hmm, bummer. All right, I know there's a whole bunch of comments there, but we will, uh, I'll get to those in just a second. We're gonna try to get this antenna thing sorted out here. See, it. see the problem, <laughs> Problem with it being 90 degrees, I gotta go behind the camera because there's some trees over here. If I bring it behind, if I bring it in front of the camera, we'd be pointing directly at the trees. So, uh, oh, there we go. Now we got some picture. Oh, and it's gone. <laughs> that could be payload rotation. I did see that it was spinning. We're also getting downrange a bit. Yeah, it's still, sh I feel like it should be better than this, but yeah. Cutting in and out quite a bit. I almost wonder. I didn't really do the math on what what a dipole, where that uh, where that void is on a dipole. But yeah. I almost wonder if we're this far down range like this, if the dipole would have been would have been better. The good news is, if it goes higher, the right, will that'll widen out. Yep. So, all right, so we'll just hang out here for a second. I guess we'll let this, uh, let's see, we'll go, uh, let's see, we can go to the live map here like this for a bit while we, we're gonna let the payload go a little bit higher, um, see if we can get better reception from the video, but, uh, but there we go. And let's, so you can see where we are on the map and I'm gonna get to some, uh, some questions here that I missed uh, while we were, for, for quite a while here. Um, yeah, so the video, somebody said the video is going to cut out a lot. They're still testing. Yeah, so we're, we're trying to test what the ideal antenna environment is here for this video. So uh, the fact that it's cutting in and out is completely expected. Um, we're just trying, we're going to try to minimize the cutting in and out. And it, we're, this is experimentation. We're trying to figure out what's going on. So um, we got another, I mentioned it early in the broadcast, but we have another type of antenna coming later on that, uh, that we will uh, also attempt as well to see if that improves anything um and so here do you want uh do you want to look at my phone for uh pointing purposes you want this app give them our it's just got the azimuth and elevation on the right there so then we know where to point the antenna. So we've got a custom Android app, which soon we'll hopefully make available to everybody. Um, but uh, yeah, custom Android app for tracking our balloon. And it lets me know from basically from my position right here, which way to point the antenna, how far away it is from me, all that kind of stuff. So it makes it a lot easier to, to do that. Also tells me where the predicted landing location is. So it makes it easy to find that as well. So um, 
Let's see. Any idea what they've changed live feed since last flight? Yeah, so we changed some antennas. We're, we're playing with antennas. We're trying to figure out what the best antenna is here. Like uh, we, now we have a patch antenna on the bottom of the payload. The downside of the patch antenna is it's directional. It's, it's gonna push or transmit all the signal straight towards the ground, but it does kind of come out in a cone shape. So the higher it gets, the, the further we'll be able to pick that, that up because uh, the cone gets bigger and bigger because it kind of comes out at an angle. Um, and the lower it is to the ground, the harder it is to pick it up. So there's kind of a, there's, there's a bit of a sweet spot or I guess an unsweet spot um, where as it travels further away from us but has not risen in altitude yet, um, it's not high enough for us to pick up the signal. So, so uh, that's what we're trying to, we're trying to figure out what the best antenna setup here is. Um, the other issue that we have here for today is we've got, um, Ver I think, I don't know if it's vertically or horizontally polarized patch antenna, um, which means that as the payload spins, we'll get periods of good reception and bad reception. Um, and that's, that's something we can't fix with this type of antenna. We can switch to a circular, circularly polarized antenna, which we actually have coming, should come here next week, um, that'll fix the spinning portion of it. But that circular polarized antenna doesn't have as high a gain as the parabolic grid does. Um, so kind of a balancing act trying to figure out what's, what's the best setup here. Um, so yeah, we've got, uh, we got nothing coming right now. Um, let's see. Um, no worries electrical engineering is a hobby of mine so i was curious oh yeah so changing antennas here he's talking about what changed um astonishing views says weather world hopefully we should pick this up in a little bit we're going to leave the map up here for a little while but we kind of kind of completely lost everything at the moment i'm going to play with the antenna in just a second here and we may even might even try to spin the broadcast around so at least you can see what's happening um what goes up must come down. Yep, we're expecting about a two hour flight here today. I have not looked at, I don't know what our ascent rate is. Um, so that the ascent rate basically, is basically deter, uh, based on how much helium we put in the balloon. That can be, um, that can be t really tough to, to get precisely down. Um, so it's always kind of, you know, we, we put in the, the what we think is the correct amount of helium based on our gauges here on the ground, um, but we're not exactly measuring the helium, so sometimes we get more or less lift than expected. I'm hoping that we're pretty close to where we expected to be. Um, and we'll see uh, see how fast this is this is gonna rise here. You can't see. The big downside. So Hab Hub is putting our landing like right in the lake. <laughs> We're gonna really hope that it does not do that. Um, but our landing predictor is still predicting uh, in the Stanley Hall Gorham area, uh, in between the lakes. So that would be good. Well, we're gonna have to see. We're gonna that. So the ascent rate is a big factor there, and then the when it actually bursts is gonna be a huge factor. If it bursts early, we're gonna be closer to the lake. If it bursts later, it'll push us uh, away from Seneca Lake a little bit, which would be good, but too late, and then we start to drift towards uh, Canandaigua Lake. So we're kind of, we're trying to thread the needle in between two lakes there. Um, let's see, how about a skew planner wheel antenna? Uh, I'm going to be honest there, Demungles, uh, I have no idea what that is. Uh, <laughs> I am not great with radio or antenna theory. Mike is. Mike is great. And there's a bunch of people on our Discord channel that are way better at antenna theory than I am. A bunch of people emailed me afterwards and said, like, oh, you should try this or do this or do that. And those are awesome. Those are really helpful. Um, but I have no... Do you know what a skew planar wheel antenna is? I have no idea no, what I that don't. is. No, oh, even Mike doesn't know what that is. I have no idea what that is. So That's you have really to... Cool. It, yeah, it sounds awesome. It's got a really big name. Do you need to balance the payload? Um, we... We kind of roughly balance the payload. In the early days, we perfectly balance the payload, but um, it's kind of roughly balanced right now. But I would bet, 
I bet that it's pretty off balance. Oh, hey, that's a pretty good picture there. Here, let me. Mike's messing with the antenna here. Let me switch. Where's my mouse? I don't know where my mouse is. There it is. Here. Oh, there we go. So Mike's getting. Is it better? Yeah. Let me full screen this so people people can see it while we got it. We don't know how long it's gonna last. So of course, it's cutting out just as I was about to go full screen. There Here we, we go. go. So, so you can see it while we got it. So here's live live video. This it. What's our altitude at there on the the app? I should tell you right on the app. Oh, right, on the app. right in the middle there somewhere. Altitude twenty six thousand feet. Twenty six thousand feet. Eight thousand eighty one hundred meters. Eight. 8,100 meters for our non-U.S. friends. So there you are. Oh, DeMungle says that it's like a cloverleaf antenna. That I do know what it is. Cloverleaf antenna. That skew planter wheel antenna. Um, I did some testing with a cloverleaf antenna. Um, but uh, the, the patch antenna in perfect orientation worked better. Now that would... Oh no, here we go. That was worse. It's better the other way. Oh, look at that. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Or B. That, wow. Definitely B. Is that one? Oh, and it's gone again. But that may be a little bit of payload spinning. So, so that's to be expected. The cutting in and the cutting out is to be expected. We're getting... The clouds look pretty awesome today. I'm not going to lie. Um, so, I'm, I don't know. We'll see how long this lasts. It's pretty cool. Uh, where is this? Yeah, we're in Farmington, New York, just out of Rochester. Um upstate new york here uh can you explain to us how the balloon pops at altitude i assume it's lack of pressure that pops it yeah so this balloon is going as it rises in the atmosphere kind of cutting in and out here we're gonna go split we'll go back to split screen here oh, maybe not well i hate to go split screen if we get decent video but because that's kind of it's really cool to look at when it's when it's good video like that but here we'll go like that maybe i can even here we'll do some production on the fly I'll make this bigger and then I'll put myself down in the corner here maybe let's see so you can, you can kind of see this here like that maybe let's see do I have this video cropped no it's not cropped sorry I'm producing on the fly here so what I wanted to do was something like this make it a little bit bigger so that you can you got some decent views but uh if it gets obnoxious then at least you can look at my my pretty face um so anyways the uh so as this balloon ascends uh the there's a certain amount of helium inside the balloon that uh displaces the air around it that's what causes the buoyancy is it displaces the air around it and then it rises above it um and so as it gets higher in the atmosphere, the atmospheric pressure gets lower. So our atm the atmosphere is a lot thinner the higher up you go. And so because there's less pressure in the atmosphere, the pressure inside the balloon starts to push the sides of the balloon out and it starts to expand. And the, it's basically trying to equalize pressure. So that pressure inside the balloon is trying to equalize with the pressure outside and it's expanding that balloon. And as it goes higher and higher, it continues to expand and get bigger and bigger. On the ground, it's about six feet in diameter. When it bursts, it's between like 35 to 40 feet in diameter. So it gets pretty huge. Um, and so once it gets up to um, once it gets up to about 100,000 feet, it'll get to a point where it's so big that it it can't hold on anymore, and then it will burst and hopefully shred into a million pieces. That's when you know you got a good burst. If it just tears one big tear. That's that's usually bad. Usually, that's some sort of manufacturing defect, um, or some sort of imperfection, or maybe there's a pinhole in it from something on the ground. Usually, we want it to burst and just shred into a million pieces, little tiny pieces. Um, and then, uh, so basically, it expands out, bursts, and there's a parachute that's in line, and it will uh, immediately open. It doesn't really do anything for the first, you know, fifty thousand feet because there's not enough atmosphere for it. But once it gets to about uh, like 40 to 50,000 feet, then the parachute starts engaging and it gets more and more the closer it gets to the ground. Um, and then hopefully we'll, we will be there waiting for it. So we will see. Um, I'm 
Oh yeah, now that it's, um, what's our angle? It should be off. Well, I don't really know which way we're pointing here, but I feel like it should be off to the southeast of us. Well, I guess I... Okay, it could be. better further out. Um... So let's see, um, what else did I miss question-wise? Um, looks like Germany. Never been to Germany, so I don't know. I feel like a bird that is drunk and soaring and spinning. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess you could get that kind of feeling from this. Um, will it stop spinning? No. Um, so we do have, we've got some like, um, there's some swivel hooks like you'd use for fishing that are attached to it that that kind of try to minimize the spinning. There are other things that you can do to minimize spinning, but everything you put on board takes weight. And weight is super critical with launching balloons. So um, I don't really want to put st weight, extra weight on board to stop the spinning. We do a little bit of trying to mitigate that spinning, but unfortunately it spins a lot. Um, so... Uh, so yeah, not, it, it will not stop spinning. A lot of times when it gets higher up in the atmosphere, it does, the spinning does settle down a little bit when the winds calm down. Um, why can't it, made, can't it be made solid so it does not burst? Um, they do have balloons that don't burst. They're called super pressure balloons. Um, usually they're made of like a, um, well, you can do them like really small out of like mylar balloons you can use mylar balloons and do fly like really tiny pico payloads um and those mylar balloons won't burst those are intended to float uh, some of them are intended to float forever they don't usually but some of them can there was a guy i don't remember what the guy's name is i bet you you might know but the, some guy that had a pico payload that went like 15 times around the world before yeah. it yeah, lost contact circumnavigated yeah he was up there for over nine months right well, and Mike has done uh, a payload that, I don't know, yours went to, like, Europe or something, right? I've circumnavigated once. Oh, you did? That's right. You almost you almost recovered the circumnavigated almost one. recovered it. Like that's that right. Answer. Yeah, so Mike has circumnavigated the globe with one of those Mylar balloons, and those are designed not to expand. And so what happens is they get to a certain point where they the balloon can't expand anymore, so usually you underinflate the balloon so it's not 100% full. It will expand a little bit as it goes up, but eventually it can't expand anymore, and then it stops rising. So because the atmosphere gets thinner, in order for it to continue to rise, it has to expand so that it can displace the same amount of air. There's less air there, but it has to displace the same amount of air in order to continue to rise. And uh, eventually you get to the point where the balloon can't expand, so it stops rising, and then it just floats, becomes a floater. Um, so they do make those called super pressure balloons. And then NASA has super and Project Loon from Google, they have some super pressure balloons that are just enormous. Those are huge. Um, so they do make those. But these are latex balloons. We want these to go up and come down uh, in just two to three hours. That way we can get all the video and we don't run out of battery. <laughs> um, let's see, what else? Is receive antenna is the patch antenna? I think no. The receive antenna we have is a parabolic grid antenna. I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, we'll show you what's going on. Um, what else? What about a swivel between the cargo between uh, the cargo butt? Yeah. So that's what that's basically what we have to prevent the spinning. Is there's a one of those uh, uh, swivel fishing hooks that's between the parachute and the payload. Um, and that's designed to, uh, you know, any, a lot of times it's the balloon that induces the spinning. Um, so the balloon can start spinning and that makes everything else spin. And so we have that swivel hook on there to kind of isolate that so that the payload doesn't spin because of the balloon. But that does mean that if the payload starts spinning on its own, there's nothing, you know, sometimes having the balloon not on a swivel hook can be nice because you get that, that extra, um, uh, momentum that's needed to spin the whole thing with the balloon. Sometimes the balloon can prevent it from spinning uh, because everything would have to spin. But with that swivel hook, you get a little breeze that hits the payload and that thing can spin. 
Um, there we go. Um, let's see. Let me go back to Periscope, see uh, what else we missed. Uh, okay, I thought I would ask some applications on the patch. would be much better. Patch would be much better. Thing. Yeah, so uh, there's a bunch of it. We tried a dipole. We've tested with a clover leaf. We haven't flown a clover leaf. We tested with that. We tried a dipole. We've got the patch antenna. The patch antenna is on board the flight, pointed down at the ground. Um, we've got a parabolic grid antenna. And then our next flight, hopefully, we'll test a circular polarized antenna, uh, both on the payload and on the ground, to try to receive video and uh, fix the spinning portion of it. So. Yeah, we can try the Yagi here. Um, we're gonna have to rig up our our system again. Um, we do have some other. Um, where are we got a? Are we still like 90 degrees or something? Is that where we're still pointing? So here, I'm gonna. Can I spin this around here so you can see what's happening? Let's see. Will this spin? Let me see if I can spin this monitor without breaking something. All right, so this is get my sunglasses. I don't know where my sunglasses are. Getting pretty sunny. So this is what we're using to track here right now. Um, and I guess I'm going to bring this a little bit closer just because I want to see the monitor and see if we can see. Kind of just moving it around, see if we get a little bit better reception anywhere. I'm not, so what? Uh, should be like there. That's what it's How calling for. Yeah. I have to ask. Uh hey, here, I just want to talk to you here, so I'm gonna unplug the mic for a second. All right, we get uh, a lot of bystanders that, that see what's happening from a distance, and then they want to be they're like, what in the world are you guys doing? <laughs> uh, so somebody wanted, to, somebody wanted some info. Yeah, do you want to get that? Uh, we, might be a, we might, like, hand point that Yagi and see, uh, see if we can get anything. I mean, the, the parabolic... Shit, I gotta calibrate my phone's compass if I'm gonna try to use my phone. 
Hold on one second before we hook that up. Let me, let me just try one more thing. Now it's getting hot with the flight suit. <laughs> there we go. Okay. It was nice earlier. So we are at... Okay, the target's at 25 degrees. It's pretty low in the sky, actually, right now. So 25 degrees is there. And it says... It says we're at 100 and, 108. It should be uh, pretty much right where we're pointed. But uh, you know, we're not getting anything here. And this could be, you know, this could be kind of a function of the patch antenna that's on there because it's pretty much pointed right straight at the ground. Um, you know, we might be outside of that kind of cone sh shape here. And we're also, we're getting to the point where it's almost, it's furthest distance away from us. It's currently uh, 15 miles away from us right now, so could be a bit of a struggle so, yeah let's swap it out for the this other one here I will be the part of tripod yeah you you be the tripod if we get some sort of miracle signal here then we'll rig up a tripod and see here you want to let's see if we're at the right elevation oh, yeah pretty much right on elevation wise Pretty much right there. Are we get well. we getting anything? We're getting nothing. Hmm. Well, we might switch back to the map since we're getting no signal, and then we may, I don't know, we we might just uh, we might just push on to the recovery site. And I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to keep streaming all the way to recovery today. We'll see if that's successful, but try to keep streaming. Let me switch it, switch it to the map. I thought it was going to go further. I thought it would be a better, more of a southern angle. So I thought we'd be in the trees for just a few minutes, and then I thought we'd be pointed this way. But uh, I was wrong. Yeah, it's going right down the yeah. All right, where's my? I can't see the scroll bar, so I can get you to a map here. Let's see, live map. All right, we're gonna switch it to switch it to here. This map will come up here in just a second see what's happening and then I'll throw since we're not really getting any video um, I will throw the video over here on the side kind of like like this and then if if for some miracle reason it comes back then uh, then you'll see it come back but, but that's where we are um, All right. Um, yeah, so I'll check your comments in just a second. Well, my, my kids were here earlier, so I'm going to go say goodbye to them. And then I'll come back and we'll chat for a few more minutes before we leave for recovery.
me get the microphone hooked back up here. So, yeah, unfortunately, the I feel that this, this video is worse. Um, um, sorry, I'm checking, uh, Um, I was checking to see if all our live tracking stuff is working correctly. So, um, okay, so let's see if we can repoint this antenna. So we are currently at, what are we at? 43,000 feet. The balloon is 19 miles away. This is pretty much the peak. Uh, this is a, you know just about the farthest away that it's going to get from us and so it should start coming back after this but that antenna is pointed directly at it and see I almost feel like this might have been a day to use the dipole we, we probably should have used the dipole antenna today and used the uh, the patch antenna last week but it's interesting we may have to going forward may have to look at the flight pattern and decide kind of last minute which antenna to use it's a good consideration there um yeah 43,000 what did I say 43,000 feet yeah we're not even halfway yet um so we're still uh 43,000 feet uh it's going it's actually it's ascending a little slower than I expected what is what does Habhub say our ascent rate is Habhub is reporting our ascent rate at three and a half meters per second. Oh dear. So that's pretty slow. I mean, the, the good news is that a slow ascent rate is going to mean that we, uh, we should get a higher altitude. So we will see... We're gonna see how this how this works out. I mean, it also means that the the flight is gonna take longer. Um, um, okay, yeah, three point six meters per second is what HabHub is reporting. Which, you know, the interesting thing is, I did intentionally. We, we did our lift calculations a little bit differently today um, to try to account for the weight of the, the nozzle that actually inflates the balloon. And so, um, so, so I wonder, uh, that could have, could have had a factor. Um, in our slow ascent rate, so. So yeah, slower, slower could be, could mean for something interesting. We'll see how this flight turns out here. Um, sorry, I'm trying to read our, our landing predictions at the same time as I'm talking here. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so... We're getting no no live video, huh? Bummer. Well, what we might want to do, and this might be this hmm, might be the thing to do here. How? What are we at altitude wise? Maybe what I'll do here is um, so normally I would stick around and keep broadcasting, but I think I'm going to try to keep running the live broadcast software. Um, but I think. I think what I might try to do is um, we'll try to tear things down here quickly, get on the road, and then maybe we can get somewhere close to the landing site and try to pick up, try to reconnect with the video signal. Um, not sure, so we'll we'll see. Uh, but there you go. So it's uh, Columbia five five six nine on Periscope says tests are for gaining knowledge. Success is just a happy result. Yes, for sure. This is definitely a test. Um, this is by no means 
uh, supposed to work 100%. Uh, if it did, I would be ridiculously surprised. Um, but yeah, we are. This is just a test. Um, so we're 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 figuring it out. This is this is what it's for. Um, can I ask what the max weight for your payload is? So the maximum weight of the payload that you can have without having to go into special requirements is six pounds. Uh, there are some additional requirements between four and six pounds. So you have to make sure your payload density is lower than three ounces per square inch if you're over four pounds. And so for us, we generally try to stay below that four pound mark because then we don't have to worry about any of those other things. We are less than three ounces per square inch for our density anyways, but um, I just like to I prefer just to stay under four pounds and then there's no question about, you know, did we, you know, you know, was our payload under that or not? Or, um, I mean, we're well under three ounces per square inch, but um, our, our box is pretty large. But generally, if you stay below four pounds, then you're okay. Um, six pounds is the hard limit. No single package can be more than six pounds without special permission. And then you can have multiple packages on one balloon. Your maximum weights for all your packages combined is 12 pounds. Um, so those are kind of the weight restrictions for high altitude balloons. Um, is there a gyroscope solution to the swivel problem? Um, you could do like a gyroscope of some sort, but I think the easier thing to the swivel problem will be just to use a circular polarized antenna and then you don't have to worry about the swivel, at least from the video standpoint. Um, as far as like the, the op so we do have, there are some GoPro cameras on board. So we'll have, we'll, we'll definitely have good quality video, maybe not this video that we're the one that you're looking at here but we'll have good quality video we just won't get it until we pick up the payload um let's see what do we i see some comments on youtube hey man quit saying sorry you're doing science we're enjoying it carry on <laughs> thanks heat shield i appreciate that he says quit saying sorry i know i just can't i'm very close to canada the, can the canadians are very polite population i'm not a canadian but close to Canada. I don't know. That's my excuse. <laughs> uh, does the NOAA catch Tori's signal? And what info does Tori gather? And who does he share it with? Um, NOAA does not receive our, our signal. We don't launch balloons frequently enough for us to be of any value to them. We do collect the same information that NOAA collects for their flights. And we do publish, we do publish it. It'll go, it'll go out. It should works correctly should go out on Twitter automatically when we reach about 55,000 feet um, our software should automatically tweet a skew T graph we'll see if that works it did not work last week but we'll see if it works today um, um, what else? was there something else in that question they said, what did who does he share well yeah we pretty much just publish it on our website more of just kind of an intro you know whoever's interested in it you should use a better antenna thanks thanks adaptable Ruben yeah th I appreciate that good suggestion <laughs> it's so here's the thing with with antennas and and I'm guilty of this because I'm not great with radio theory but the more I get into it which is this is the fun part about engineering these sort of things is the more I get into it the more you realize that antennas are not simple they like they're very complicated. I feel like we take, the, if you're not into like the amateur radio or the ham radio community, you take that for granted quite a bit. You have a radio, you have an antenna on your car. You got a, you know, maybe a, a satellite radio antenna. Um, you know, you've, you've got, you maybe you've used walkie talkies with antennas or something like that. And you just kind of take them for granted. You figure an antenna, it's just a big long stick. It's just, that's an antenna. You just need a better one or a longer one or a bigger one or something. Or, you know, maybe you've seen satellite dishes and you're just like, well, get the biggest satellite dish you can get. But antennas are very, very complicated. Like you have to tune them to be a very specific frequency. Then there's radiation patterns for, you know, do you want it directional? If you do want it directional, which direction do you want to have it? Is it going to be vertically polarized, horizontally polarized, is circular polarized? There's so much that goes into antenna theory. It gets very, very complicated. Um, and there are people that are way, way better at it than I am. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the just use a better antenna. That's uh, there's a lot more that goes into it than, than just that. <laughs> um, would vertical fins made of foam dampen the rotation or would they 
have to be huge. You can actually use, so one, like kind of a weird thing that people use are like pool noodles. Um, and you can just um, extend out, I gotta back up a little bit, but if you extend, if you just put long arms on it, um, you'll, it, it will be harder for the payload to rotate just because it, it's mass, it has mass that's spread out so far. So, so it's moment of inertia is, is much higher than, than a, a smaller payload that can spin a lot easier. So, um, so people have taken like pool noodles and just put them way out here like this and then it doesn't spin as much. You can also, I mean, anything you can do to extend something out and, and widen your mass like that will help reduce spinning. But the problem with that is, like I mentioned earlier, is anything you put on it adds weight. And the more weight you have, the more helium you need, the bigger balloon you need, or the lower you'll go. Um, you got your regulation limits you have to, you have to consider. Uh, you can't put as much elect as many electronics on board, so maybe you got to get rid of a camera in order to put those fins on. And which is more important? Is the camera more important, or those fins more important? There's a lot of things that you got to consider when you're deciding what to put on. And, and for us, the spinning doesn't really bother me. I know it bothers a lot of people, but it doesn't bother me. <laughs> um, and so I don't mind the spinning. A lot of times, what I do is is uh, we record video of the whole flight and then I'll just grab snapshots out of it. And then when we publish our flight videos, usually I'll grab snippets of the flight that are less spinny to show you guys so that people don't get sick watching the videos. But um, but yeah, it, it spins. Sometimes it spins really fast. Sometimes it's nice and gentle and it just kind of hangs out, which is always cool. Um, let's see, what else did we miss? For comments here yeah we did order a circular polarized antenna but I I fear that even that circular polarized antenna might have the same problem that we're running into today Wow we are definitely we're definitely a slow ascent rate today uh, 3.9 meters per second it's a little bit higher but it, it did it did push off to the east a little further than it was supposed to not supposed to go quite that far past the lake there um but that's all right we'll we'll see how this goes um so yeah the circular polarized antenna may run into the same issue because it's directional and it's pointed at the ground you have to get the higher up you get the bigger that cone will be and then you you know that's where you'll get your chance of possibly receiving some of the video so uh, right now see right now the payload the payload is at a 20 degree elevation from where we are so it's only up like like this to you know this far up from from level that we're pointing the antenna um which is is not enough really we'd want i'd want to see like 40 plus degrees of elevation in order to be inside that that cone there so that's the unfortunate part for today so the dipole might have been better for today um pool noodles <laughs> heat shields laughing about the pool noodles i know right um yeah that's people do it the big pool noodles it's kind of crazy but um all right so i'm trying to decide what to do here for tracking so i think i'm going to try to pack up and then i'm going to try to keep the live stream going uh, so it looks like we hit 50,000 feet. I want to see, I guess before I start packing up, we're at 53,000 feet right now. That's 16,000 meters or 16 kilometers. Um, we are, uh, I want to see if my skew T graph is going gonna, is gonna to publish correctly because that did not last time. So, so uh, check out the Twitter feed, at OLHZN on Twitter. And uh, hopefully, if it's working correctly, you should get a skew T graph it publishes automatically here within seconds should be coming up any moment here um, just waiting to see waiting to see if that comes up and then I'm gonna try to once I get a chance to check that I'm going to open my water is that my water uh, it must be it's got to be I threw out that oh yeah that's I left my inverter on, I forgot. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, is it done? Yeah, it won't Toe? start. Uh-oh. <laughs> Mike toasted his battery. He left his power inverter on. Um, all right, so I guess, well, I just want to see if that skew T graph is going gonna, is gonna to go. <laughs> Mike needs a jump. <laughs> 
54,000 feet. So we're 900 feet away from uh, from getting that skew T graph. Still no video signal here at the moment. So we're just waiting to see uh, see if that comes up. Hello. Do you think you should start chasing soon? Yeah, we will very soon here. I'm just waiting. I'm going to wait for that skew T graph. And I'm going to hurry up and pack everything up. And then... Uh, let's see. Yeah, so... Uh, I want to see... Uh, sorry, I can't talk and read at the same time. Waiting for that 55,000 foot broadcast. It's got to break 55,000 feet in order for the skew T graph to... So it's, like, it's just taunting me. 54,992 feet. Like somebody's messing with me. So... Oh, I think somebody want... Uh, one second. Somebody's here. Alright, so, sorry, we got some people for the park wondering what's going on. Um, Alright, there we go, 55,000 feet. We broke it. Alright, everybody check at OLHDN on Twitter. We'll see if our skew T graph published. I see altitude, yeah! There's our skew T graph. Perfect! And then you can actually see, so on the skew T graph that just uh, that just posted, um, you can also see uh, the raw sounding data. So if you're super nerdy like uh, like me, you can go take a look at the raw sounding data, which will show you the actual raw values. I haven't even looked at them yet, but you can see the raw values for what was collected during today's flight. So if you want to check that out, uh, it's a pretty pretty cool little uh, uh, pretty cool little graph. I always like looking at those. I'm not sure that I know exactly how to read them. <laughs> I mean, I do kind of know how to read them, but um, but I'm, I'm definitely not a meteorologist, so a meteorologist probably could read them much better than I could, so. Um, so yeah, that went out as expected. All right, I'm going to start packing up uh, as fast as possible, and so that we can get on the road. I want to hopefully, the landing zone is a little bit far, far away from me today, so uh, I want to try to get on the road quickly, and hopefully I can try to live stream the entire time while we're, while we're moving. So, um, so I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to shut these cameras off, and we will, uh, I'll let you kind of watch the action here, or maybe I'll spin this back around. That's what I'll do. Spin this back around because we're not getting any live video. We've got so many wires here. I gotta be careful that we don't rip something out. Alright, so we'll spin this back around this way. Then at least, hey, for, uh, you know, who knows, we'll be able to see something. Um, I do have to switch. Let's see, let me just switch cameras for a second. Because what this will allow me to do is kind of it should recenter recenter the tracking map a little better, easier to easier to see where the position. Is. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that recentered it. So, okay, I'm gonna pack up. I'll leave uh, leave the mic hot so that at least you can kind of hear what's going on. And then the the next big event is gonna be recovery. We're gonna see uh, we'll see how this goes. As, has Overlook Horizon 19 already launched? Yep, we're in the air. We're almost 60,000 feet. Um, let's see. Okay. All right. Yep. So just reading a couple of comments. All right. We're good to go. Let's start packing up here. Let's hang out here for a little bit. Oh, we pack up. We'll be back soon.
jump start your car? Yeah. <laughs> Mike's up and running again. lost track of time with the inverter. It's like, oh, I better start the car. The inverter's been on for a while. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, the inverter's been on for too long. <laughs> cabling to see if I could have boosted it from my FPV batteries.
almost there. What are we looking at? <clears throat> oh, oh, what are we looking at altitude wise? Anybody read it? I can't read well, it. It's scramble to pack up, I imagine, today with that slow sound. Less of a scramble, but <laughs> the landing is much further away. Yeah. So. <laughs> Tear down this parabolic. Are we getting anything? Um, yeah. yeah, we're not getting anything. So, I'm gonna tear that down. I'll take that out of the stream here. So it's not even up. There's no mouse. All right. So we're taking taking that out of the stream. We're not getting anything. Altitude, 62,000 feet, about 19 kilometers. It's starting to make the turnaround. So that's put, our landing is pushing, pushing a little close to the water. Stay away from the water. Put it in the 
Faraday backpack? Yeah. Hopefully not. We'll find out in a second when everybody freaks out if the stream dies. Alright, let's see. This. What yeah, anymore? Get rid of this external monitor. We're gonna get rid of both of these things here. The external monitor. And my stream doesn't die. Yeah, so we're still. Oh, are we still live? Don't know, my computer's freaking out. Don't know if we're still live. My software is frozen. I was hoping that would not happen. Oh, it, oh, is it coming back? Are we back? We're live. We're live. You're gonna do it live. It says we're live, but I, I see a blank screen. Yeah, where's my map? streaming a black <laughs> screen. Yeah, it should come back in a second. It was streaming black. Hopefully come back in a second. 
Okay, we lost the map. Try to go here. We'll try to the camera anyway. We'll try to reload the map. We'll go here, and then we'll go to the live map. Will it reload the live map? There we go. Ah, perfect. Okay. Come on. All right. So it means this is disconnected. So, all right. We're gonna shorten this cable a bit. Like that, so hopefully you should still have should have audio. It's gonna be messy audio for a second while we wrap things up. Alright, so that's connected to there. This is we might switch to the phone at some point. Okay, stay with me. Are we completely disconnected there? I believe we are completely disconnected here. Okay. doing something working on all right so I'm gonna bring this car just power for a minute we're on battery power we're gonna plug in quick laptop battery dies we can dismount that table there okay you're going in the car in okay are we in we're in all right so I'm gonna face you this way and then this way we're just kind of slowly slowly moving you here okay hopefully you're gonna see me there at some point like this Okay, so that's, that's good and working, but I'll set you here for the moment, so at least you're not staring staring at the car. You can kind of see what's happening. Just for a minute, we're almost ready to move. Five eight eight zero. One one ten point nine. Still on the radio. Perfect. Okay, we're moving. Where we're 
going. Let's get this up there. Okay, you still with me? Hope you're with me. Make sure I got a camera at the ready for the landing. Wow, it's hot in here. All right, we're gonna have some air conditioning noise for a minute because it's thousand degrees in here. minutes from the predicted landing site. That is uh, not close. Okay, we're on the move here. Let's flip this. Clip this to myself here. Happening. All right, so head south on County Road 8 toward Collet Road. Let me get my radio situated here. Whoa! That's what happens when you got too much stuff in the car. Oh no. Try to raise Mike on the radio. KD2 KPZ uh, on the radio. KD2 KPZ, gotcha. Okay. Here we go. We're off. Here's my microphone. Okay, see this is why I don't normally stream this part. It's because it's complicated. It takes a it takes a lot of effort to uh try to get everything up and situated. I got a mosquito flying around. Alright, so we're still ascending. Payload says we're at 79,000 feet. We are... <laughs> Let's cut the predicted landing directly over the water. Gosh. I really hope this doesn't land in the water. Oh, man. We just have... We have to hope that the slow ascent rate is enough to... Uh, Push us back to the west. Because that is uh, that is going to be trouble. We are very, very, very close to the water. Which actually now the predicted landing is now in the water. In a quarter mile, turn left onto New York 96 uh, South. I just had a bad feeling about that water today. So everybody cross your fingers at home. And just really hope that we don't land in the water. That's gonna make for a very troublesome recovery. One, I Take don't. The next left onto New York 96 South. Number one, I don't have anything that is. Uh, I don't have any flotation device right now. My inflatable boat is at home. I figured we were close enough to Continue home. New York 96 South for 12 miles. If we landed in the water, we could run home and grab it. But uh, it's one of those things that I just like. I never. Uh, I'm gonna pull over because I lost my.
hoping those batteries stay somewhat dry. I mean, they could take a little bit of water in the bottom, but uh, if it fills up, we're, uh, we're gonna be in trouble. So yeah, so obviously you heard heard that conversation there. So the payload does float, uh, as does the balloon and the parachute and all the all the string. It should float. I, mean, I guess I should say it should float. I've never really tested this theory. That's why we're hoping for a uh, rapid descent. Uh, I think at this point, actually, we're hoping for a really late burst because uh, the the landing predictor assumes that it's going to burst at. I think 32 kilometers. And so if it by some miracle goes higher because of the slow ascent rates, it could push west. Is it going west all the way up to Apogee or is it start coming east again at Apogee? And a fast descent, which is also possible because this payload is a little bit heavier than uh, some of the previous payloads. So. Uh, so it could come down quicker than than usual. That's a difficult question here for today. Can we can we clear the water, or are we are we going to be in the drink? And I don't know the answer to that yet. It's really going to depend upon. I mean, as soon as the balloon bursts, we're going to have a really good idea on um, what <laughs> what today's day is going to be like. Because um, that's that's going to be the big the big question. Here. Stop at this gas station. Do you mind? Uh, do you want to just keep going, or do you want to make a quick stop? Uh, yeah, we can we can make a quick stop here. Two reasons. One is uh, I just noticed a couple of things on my console uh, really wigged out, which is why we do the flat battery. So. I'm hoping when the car reboots, it'll be better. I'm going to back in just in case we need to jump it. Alright, so we're stopped at a gas station for a moment. gas station. This is this is what happens. This is IRL streaming right here. This is real life. So I'm going to run into the gas station quick. Um, and then we're going to come back and we're going to get on the road here. So be, this, this is what happens. You're streaming. Streaming lap. Wow, that thing was in my lap the whole time. I don't know if you could hear any of that. All right. So I don't have your comments up, so I can't see them. But I'm going to take a second here and uh, I'll run inside quick and I'll be right back.
we're back here. Oh man, this really has me nervous. This landing location. Not looking good. Ah. Just waiting on Mike. Mike's still inside. Okay, it's heading over the lake now. <laughs> that landing prediction could not be any more dead center in the water. That's just insane. <laughs> All right, sorry, that, is that blowing right on the microphone, that, that air? It's hot, I'm just looking at my microphone levels here. Okay. So sorry, I have no idea what the quality of this uh, this stream is going to be. You guys will have to tell me in the comments, which I can't see now, and I'll look at it later. You guys will have to tell me in the comments whether whether this is good, you like hanging out on the recovery portion, or you just prefer that I don't stream the recovery and we we just you know do our you know just show it later. All right, Mike's behind me, good to go. All right, we're off. Could that landing prediction be any more s <laughs> my computer. It's not looking good in the But uh let's see we are Hoping it stays dry. Pushing back to the west a tiny bit, not enough yet. We got a truck on the side of the road here. Watch out for this guy. check it before we left but I usually I do bring multiples just for that reason but I didn't check it. Anyway I was wondering whether we should set up via New York 488 South for one mile. Uh I show but the X is a little closer to the shore. Yeah now we just gotta we gotta hope that it drops like a rock, or uh, or I don't know, maybe that it floats. But I don't think it, I don't think it can float that far. I think, I think our best chance is fast descent. I don't know. I don't know where we're going because now it just put the prediction out on the east side. Holy crap! It did. <laughs> It'll take a couple. Uh, gonna take a couple transmissions here to. But it might. It might go east side. So that was. Uh, that was two transmissions. So it's gonna start averaging the descent rate here, and then we'll get a better idea. Right now. <laughs> you getting any of 
Yeah. Oh, hey, you guys are back. So, uh, so the camera's back. Next one, shout out to the So we have balloon burst. I don't know, you probably, I know we drove through a little patchy area there. Uh, we've got balloon burst at about 101,000 feet. Um, we are we are flirting with danger here. We're very, very close to the water. We're watching that predicted landing like a hawk. I don't know what it's going to do. I, I honestly have no idea. This is going to be it's going to be a nerve-wracking landing. This is very, very, very close to the water. We do not like this at all. It's way too nerve-wracking. We're our best chance right now, and what the landing predictor is is going with, is it says it's going to float across the lake 